Hello everyone, welcome to the second of my virtual tours. This is in response to the fact that we can't go and see uh, most of our, well, our museums, our historical places at the moment due to that pesky COVID-19 doing its thing across the world. So for a bit of diversion, a bit of distraction, a bit of entertainment, why don't I take you to a few of the places that we are very lucky to actually be able to visit online. Yesterday we went to the British Museum and I showed you two of my favourite places. Well, I, I go there every time, so I say they're my favourite and I actually always have to create enough time so I can go and see these two particular um, pieces or places in the museum and that was the Rosetta Stone and the Sutton Who Hoard. Um, today I want to take you to the National Portrait Gallery and the National Portrait Gallery uh, in reality is a place at the top of Whitehall um, sort of where Whitehall meets the Strand um, where Trafalgar Square it's on Trafalgar Square and I love taking people here because you can get up close and personal with the figures of history that you're interested in well history and I mean there's some fantastic modern portraits portraiture in there as well um, um, but also that you're getting up and close and personal with the actual portrait, these images that you've seen um, published um, in books and online and you've seen them so many times and you actually get to see the actual portrait. So when everything is open again <laughs> and we get to go and see everything again, isn't it going to be so sweet? It's going to be amazing. We're going to be even more thankful than we were before. But today I want to take you to the Tudor and Elizabethan um, room in the National Portrait Gallery because it's the first place again that I always go to. Um, I do a, uh, a, a, a Tudor and um, uh, historical sort of walk of Whitehall and I always like to take people to the, the um, Tudor uh, Gallery in the National Portrait Gallery at the end um, or for, during that tour because um, of the portraits in there and they, they do change around because some are on loan or some will be loaned out um, and they have others that they bring out but we can have a look at them online so anyway let me stop waddling on and let me take you so if you go to npg.org.uk that is the National Portrait Gallery's website and they have on there these virtual tours so if I click on this one, so it's actually a list of the portraits which are in this room, not a actual, um, you're not physically standing in the room like we were yesterday with the British Museum. So let's just have a look at some of the portraits that are in there. Henry, now this one, so this was um, painted in the Netherlands, I believe. Oh, I need to be able to go down, not letting me, there we are. Now, doesn't he look a little bit different to the Holbein uh, version that we're so familiar with? His dress is pretty much similar, you know, the way he's dressed, but his eyes are so much, it, all his features are so much smaller. Um, and that is a very odd haircut. I have to say, Henry, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not digging that. I'm not digging that. But isn't that, oh, there you go, an Anglo, anglo Netherlandish artist. <laughs> Didn't know that was a thing. Right, let's go to our next one. I think this one is Mary, yeah. Queen Mary. Mary the First, Henry VIII's daughter, by a Catherine of Aragon. Um, I think she was supposed to have been about 17 in this portrait, if I remember rightly. I could have made that up. Um, and she is, well, she's young anyway in this, isn't she? Beautiful portrait. Not at all ugly and, st and she, so she's obviously um she's slimmer now so you sort of see her as a more as she gets older more sort of squat and obviously we know she was quite ill at the end of her life so anyway mary oh you can zoom in on these as well oh zoom in and zoom in i do apologize for my driving catherine parr now catherine parr so catherine parr um final wife of Henry VIII, um, she went on to marry Thomas Seymour and she had a, uh, she lived at Sudley, she had a baby girl by Thomas, but sadly she died 
shortly after the birth and she's buried at Soothe Castle and um, if you are watching this on YouTube then um, take a look at the Soothe Castle I've got a couple of Soothe Castle videos on there actually but Catherine is uh, is buried there um, the only the only English queen to be buried in a private chapel I think again there's some little bits of information Right, we're going to get to people that I don't know much about. So Thomas Gresham, I think he was a banker. I'm trying to think. I think he had a house on... Um, mm, 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 mm. He had a house in the city of London. I'm trying to think which street it was on because it burnt down in the Great Fire. Um, so it no longer exists. I think there's something like a... Pret a manger or something where it was. So that's Sir Thomas, Mary Queen of Scots. Now, this is such a familiar portrait of her. And so, when you're actually in the gallery and you're up close and <laughs> I keep using that phrase, but you're, you're up you can get up to these portraits and you can see the brush strokes, you can see the detail. I mean, that's that's this is a very good. Um, resolution photograph so just look at the detail on that collar the lace work is amazing um yes one of my favorites actually mary queen of scots portraits there who else have we got sir francis drake uh was he a pirate was he an explorer <laughs> i'm sure People think he's both. Here we are. He's an admiral and circumnavigator on here. Okay, that's polite. So Francis Drake, obviously. Um, so that was during Elizabeth's reign. Sir Walter Raleigh. Um, rather dapper. Look, we have this uh, fashion for earrings, and he's actually got two pearl earrings. Quite flamboyant. He's got fur on. He was doing rather well for himself at the court of uh, Elizabeth I. Okay, John Don, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about him. Let's see if we can find anything underneath this. Okay, oh, a poet. A poet and divine. Okay. Uh, presents Don in the guise of a brooding melancholic lover. An inscription around the oval, O oh Lady, Light in Our Darkness. Okay, so this, I imagine then, was a painting uh, that was in, in uh, meant to go to a very particular person as a declaration of love. Think of worse. Better than what people send to each other now. Ralph Simmons, it's a Simon, Sim, Simon, Simmons, you pronounce S-Y, Simmons, so... Um, and I don't know about him either. Please feel free if you know about these people and you've got any info to put them put it in the comments. Um, because I am interested in some of these. You don't get your portrait done in Tudor or Elizabethan times without being someone of significance. Um, just the detail, though. Sorry about that. But the brush strokes, isn't it just incredible? Incredible. So that's, that's number nine. We've got 12. So, oh, right. So Henry Unton. Now, what's interesting about this portrait, it is his whole um, life. So uh, we go from, I think it's, I need to make this out. Is it bottom right? Here he is as a baby. Um, and it takes us through his life right up to here and his his deathbed and then he's he, it looks like he's he's tottering off up to uh up to heaven over here that's why i like this portrait because it's um it's just it's interesting way more interesting. it's quite um I'm trying to think how big it is when in real life oh here we are not that big actually is it? well one and a half meters 
no, one and a half meters long, I think, by just under, so by 75 centimeters tall. Very good, right, last but one, Queen Elizabeth herself. Now, <laughs> I, uh, every time I look at any pi any picture, any portrait of Elizabeth, I think, but it's my favorite. Now the rainbow portrait is actually my favorite. Um, made even more so now due to the discovery of the Bacton altar cloth because of just the, the the idea that possibly we have the piece of cloth that she actually wore in that portrait is just ah um, and I've covered that in my membership if um, any of you are in my membership you've not seen that um, I've, I've, I've done a whole video on that for us but um, here she is um, in her coronation regalia um, and it's actually the um oh here coronation portrait uh it is her the anniversary of her death tomorrow the uh, 24th of march right let's see who's in the final portrait oh ah so interesting william shakespeare so when you go to unless they've moved him when you go to the national portrait gallery when you go when 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 um it is his portrait is actually just um in the you come out of the Tudor room you go around to the left and his portrait is there as you enter the Stuart room because of course Shakespeare was alive during uh Elizabeth's reign and the reign of James the first and he was performing at court during those those period during the both those reigns and this is the portrait that began the National Portrait Gallery collection um, it's the only known one to be sat f um, from life, so um, the most likely correct image of Shakespeare. Um, so again, very uh, exciting portrait, not just for who's in it, but I, I love the history of this portrait as well. It's called the Shando, Shandos portrait. Um, I think that's from who the owner, that's how it got that name. Anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed a quick tour around the Tudor and uh, Elizabethan gallery at the National Portrait Gallery. And I hope you're all doing very well and stay well and we will get through this and we will be traveling and seeing all these fabulous places for real again one day soon. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.